Hello and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. I'm Daryl Griffiths and this is my weekly 180 where I spend 180 seconds on the latest techie news that impacts the world of SAP. At the end, I'll pick my favourite to review in a little more detail in the cubicle. In my SAP techie news this week, the well-known recruitment agency Linksap Europe has been acquired by US-based Oxford Global Resources. Linksap has clients in more than 40 countries and this acquisition will further stretch the reach of Oxford Global Resources. And I would also imagine that this is in preparation for the 2027 end of business suite deadline, where available skilled resource levels are predicted to face an unprecedented gap. The link to the article is in the description down below. On CIO.com, just 0.2% of market share separating SAP and Salesforce from the top spot. IDC regards SAP and Salesforce to be in a tie for the number one position. The article talks about the AI differentiator driving a huge growth in application spend of $600 billion by 2028. It also quotes IDC as saying public cloud will become the foundational deployment model for enterprise application software. The link to the article is down below. From the SAP News Center, the German European national football team are using SAP technology to help them progress through the Euro 2024 games. SAP Sports Management Suite, known as SAP Sports One, allows the German team to share tactical data and info about upcoming opponents. The suite includes a messaging app, which is installed on phones and also allows match preparation information to be easily accessible. This article kind of left me wondering what the other teams are using, so if anyone knows, drop me a message down below. Redwood celebrates 30 years. The provider of workload automation software has been partnered with SAP for 20 of those 30 years. The latest iteration of the product, Run My Jobs by Redwood, is a SaaS workload automation and job scheduling solution offered by SAP as a hosted connection to and from an SAP customer's RISE environment. The link to the details is down below. The Register has even more news on what they are calling the Snowflake breach. As a recap, there is an ongoing issue with the security of Snowflake hosted database systems due to what is believed to be a compromised account in a third party company used by Snowflake the perpetrators confirmed this to be the case. The general consensus to prevent compromise is to make sure you enable multi-factor authentication on any Snowflake accounts. In a related article on bleepingcomputer.com, the Los Angeles Unified School District has had student and employee data stolen by a breach of the company's Snowflake account. I guess things things going to keep going on until at some point someone finds where the perps are getting in. Finally, I caused a slight controversy in the SAP and Oracle camp this week with my LinkedIn post, where I bid adieu to Solaris Spark from the 31st of December 2027. I've been advised that there is some oversight somewhere and that this will be corrected in due course, but let's see. My favorite item this week is my own LinkedIn post on the possible end of Solaris Spark in the SAP ecosystem. Who would have thought that I would have picked my own post? It has certainly caused a stir. Let's swoop into the detail. There, I've used that word which now sets a precedent to anyone that messaged me to say they've never heard of anyone using swoop in the context of going into detail on a subject. See my video on Sapphire 2024 to gain clarity on what the heck I'm talking about here. Anyhow, back onto this Solaris Spark subject. This is one of those moments where you're searching for something in particular and stumble upon a confusing mismatch of sat notes and dates in the SAP product availability matrix, AKA PAM. In this specific instance, I was looking around at the support dates for SAP SEM BCS, which is maybe a hint for an upcoming video. I got into depth in the business suite end of maintenance note and wandered over to PAM to look at the SAP kernels. SAP kernel 753 is out of maintenance at the end of 2027. For continued support from SAP, customers would need to be on a supported SAP kernel. The later kernel 7.54 is supported until 31st of the 12th, 2030. Sure enough, when comparing the NetWeaver 7.5 ABAP stack 754 kernel supported operating systems, you will find that Solaris Spark is not listed. A number of the other operating systems, including Solaris X64, are also not supported, and these are already known about, but Solaris Spark has not had any D support notice. What is more confusing is that the NetWeaver Java stack does list Solaris Spark, yet a NetWeaver Java stack still has a basis kernel, so I don't know how that's going to work. To try and gain further clarification, I took myself over to the kernel 754 release roadmap, SAP note 1969546, which should tell me about Solaris Spark. There was no mention of it in the note, 
but I did find it mentioned in note 3156866 for the use of kernel 754 as a replacement for 753, and the note says Solaris Spark and Solaris x8664 are not supported. That's pretty clear. I've since heard unofficially that Oracle Database 23C is going through the SAP certification process, and it was implied that Solaris Spark would be one of the SAP supported operating systems. Until I see some inkling of confirmation from SAP Notes or PAM, I'm inclined to believe that Solaris Spark will not be running kernel 754. The reason for this is because of the operating system shared library requirements for a kernel. If the required versions of the shared libraries are not available for the operating system, then the kernel will not run. What would it take to make the kernel run on Solaris Spark? It would need the required C library version, which would need to be provided in some form of operating system update. In Solaris terms, this is known as an SRU, or Support Repository Update, which are released frequently, semi-monthly or something like that, with the latest being Oracle Solaris 11.4 SRU 68 released in April this year. If the required libraries can be added or have already been added recently, then it is possible that we could see a later certification of Solaris Spark for kernel 754, which would allow Spark to reach 31st of December 2030 for SAP Business Suite. Nothing is ever simple. In PAM, it also says Solaris Spark will not be supported for running SAP ASE 16.1 database planned for release in Q4 this year, and that will take customers to 31st of December 2030. Without support for ASE 16.1, then Spark can only run 16.0, which is end of maintenance. Yes, you guessed it, 31st of 12th, 2027. Anyone that has worked in the industry long enough will know that by now, these dates, they're just dates. Nothing is set in stone until the date actually arrives and passes. Hopefully I've cleared that one up. If you found insight in this video, then why not subscribe to the channel? I'm working on the third part of my Ansible Playbooks for SAP video, plus the third part of the Rise with SAP Basis is Dead video is ready for publishing. A couple of HANA specific videos are in the pipeline as well as an Azure specific one on system recovery, and I also explore some ideas around SAP and containers. Every subscriber improves the algorithm and allows others to discover the content. I take on board the comments that you guys post down below. Some of the suggestions will be fulfilled, but videos do take time, so stick around. As always, reference links are in the description down below. Drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.